Welcome back. You're still watching the Editor's Roundtable on CNBC TV 18. Now, now we are going to talk about how the FBI flows into India have been substantial in the year so far and uh, not only standalone, but if you compare it to a lot of our Asian peers as well. India this year has got almost $13 billion worth of FBI inflows up until now since January of this year and this compares to about... Uh, you know, a much less for some of its peers like Taiwan and there's been outflows for markets like Philippines as well. For India particularly, it's the biggest buying that we've seen since December of 2020. And uh, we don't have the data for China, but the other markets show us that India has got a disproportionate amount. So let's get it on board. India has seen almost 13 billion, like I said. This compared to markets like South Korea and Taiwan getting just about 9 to 9.5 billion dollars worth of money. If you look at some of the other markets like Philippines, there's actually been an outflow of funds this year. Um, uh, you know, to the tune of almost about $430 million, while for Thailand, the outflow has been about $3.5 billion. Now, as we know, the macro situation for India has definitely improved, and that could be one of the reasons why, you know, FPIs are putting in money thick and fast. Remember, uh, rating agency Fitch recently raised their GDP forecast as well. GST collections have been very strong. The sentiment indicators like auto sales, cement sales have also picked up. But another important reason why India has been gaining is because despite the rally, the valuations are not looking that expensive. The market valuations are in line with historical averages at around 19 to 20 times. To be precise, the numbers nifty one year forward trading at 18.75 times was the 10-year average of 17 and a half times, so still not that expensive. But there are some risks that we have to put on the table. Uh, the investor sentiment now is in ex an extremely bullish zone. So CLSA put out a note this week where they said that the India bull bear index has jumped to 92% bullish uh, after the 15% rally that the Nifty has seen in the last four months. So Pankaj, my question to you is this on the valuation parameter, right? As you saw that graph on, on the channel, um, the valuations are still not as expensive if you compare to the 10-year average. Would you concur with that? And how much of an upside do you see for the Indian markets compared to global peers for the rest of the calendar year? Yes, Sonia. I mean, that's what the point we have been talking about, that uh, if one needs to be in the market, they need to be there in large caps right now. Uh, the broader markets have started to look expensive, especially the mid and small cap. And on large caps, if you look at the headline valuations, they are not as expensive. They are just one standard deviation higher than the long-term averages. Uh, and also, when we look at from a bottom-up perspective, there are many sectors, probably and stocks, uh, which are decent weights in Nifty, which have the you know probability of moving higher from the current levels. So from, the, from a broader market perspective, we are a little careful. But from a nifty perspective, valuation, as you're rightly pointing out, it's not as high as one would expect it to be. So more cautious on mid and small caps right now as we speak. Sure. Uh, Pankaj, uh, before we let you go, um, you know, within the auto space, uh, is there a case to you know, be bullish on the battery businesses? Uh, I know you won't, you won't talk stocks, but broadly, uh, is, is, you, you think there is uh, still a lot of uh, you know, room for, uh, for odd performance in the, in the auto and sellers, within that, the battery businesses? Your view. So, Nimish, if you look at, you know, battery business in, in India is between two, three players. And our belief is that IC engine is not going away in a hurry. And at least for next seven, eight years, IC engine in India is going to stay. And along with it, I think the EV ecosystem will start developing. I don't know if you are aware, now there are at least 50,000 manufacturers in China who are associated with the entire EV battery system. Somebody is manufacturing cathode, somebody is manufacturing something else. And that entire space is now occupied by China. China now commands 80% of the value chain of the entire world in EV batteries now. So incrementally, if the world was to adopt EV, I think they have to rely on China. And with the geopolitics which is going on, I am not very sure that how US will rely on China for the entire supply chain of EV batteries. So I think, sure. uh, you know, in India also, there are a couple of companies which have taken the lead uh, and our sense is that they are executing well at the ground level, uh, but it's too early to take that call on uh, the EV battery in India. Sure. But from a growth perspective, we think that batteries uh, have a long runway yes. for growth in these levels. Right. Okay, a long runway for growth. We'll end on that very optimistic note. Pankaj, thanks a lot for joining us. And to all you viewers, have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday.